It's Tuesday, and I am sore. Uh, those two hours of reps with the Young Guns last night uh, really took it out of me. I'm feeling it in the legs a little bit today. Uh, and we got Lizard's practice tonight, so I want to make sure that I'm fresh for that. Uh, so I'm going to go check out this new cryotherapy place in town that an old friend actually opened up. I've never done a cryo before, uh, but Will Manny and Joel Ocasio seem to think it's just the cat's pajamas. So anything they like's got to be good. So let's go check it out. What do you want me to do with the socks? You just leave everything okay. in there, yeah? Cool. I'll leave it up there. Come over here, I'm going to show you this is, like I was telling you before, the low machine. So this, uh, it's the same thing if you want to feel it. So that would, if you say you had like a knee injury or yeah, had a tough practice, so yeah, right. it would be like, you would do it. And this is oh, okay. like putting an ice, so 10 minutes of this would be like having an ice pack yeah, on for, for 10 hours. Okay. Right? Yeah. All right, let's hop in. A few moments later. My man Colin right here just gave me the full rundown. We got the uh, the cryo in, it was awesome. We'll definitely be back. Thanks again to uh, Renew Cryotherapy in Morristown. If you guys are in the area, definitely come check it out. Have a great day, we'll see Thanks you again soon, all right. Come by. Thanks a lot, bud. That was actually pretty great. Uh, definitely will be going back to that, my legs feel 10 times better than they did yesterday. I normally have a lot of inflammation in my uh, in my ankles. Those are feeling really good too. So uh, yeah, pumped to uh, go get a workout in tonight with the, uh, the Lizards boys. Well, Manny, you're onto something with this stuff. Okay guys, today in the kitchen, we got something a little bit different. I'm not gonna be home tonight because of practice. So I'm gonna have to show you guys something a little bit quicker. So we're gonna work on an awesome fermented hot sauce that is a real crowd pleaser. Work goes great on anything, eggs, pizza, ice cream if you like, whatever. So let's uh, just dive in. First things first, guys are going to be light of practice tonight, so I'm going to have to run around a lot. So I want to get a little bit extra minerals in. So I got a mineral water. I'm going to put in some Himalayan sea salt. And uh, oh, whoops. Let's clean that up real quick. All right. Let's have a quick sip. All right. First thing we're gonna get is a red onion and some garlic peeled, fresh red pepper, some hot red peppers, some habaneros, some Aleppo chili, some cardamom pods, some dried chilies, and finally Fresno chilies. We're going to be housing all this in an airtight container so the fermentation process can take away. So first thing we're going to do is crush some garlic. That's going to release something called allicin that's going to help with the fermentation process. Once that's done, we're just going to dice up our red onion any way you like. It can be rough chop, fine chop, just make sure you peel off the edges like so. I went with a nice rough chop on this. Totally up to you. And repeat. Next, we're gonna grab our red pepper, chop off the top. And here's a little trick to keep the seeds off your peppers. Go down the sides, around the membrane of the pepper, like so. And that will leave a weird little alien pod thing. Slice these up any way you see fit, and then just toss them in the jar. Next, we're gonna grab our Fresno chili, and you'll see the reason why I'm wearing these black gloves now. It's because if you get these uh, seeds on your hands, they leave a, a capsaicin oil on there, which is the hot part of the pepper. Uh, and if you touch your eyes or anything else, uh, you're gonna have a bad time. So I always wear these black gloves when I'm cutting hot peppers. Repeat the process again with your habanero chilies. Doesn't matter if there's a couple seeds left in there, that's okay. It's just gonna make our uh, sauce a little bit spicier. So add those as you see fit. I only leave a few in there. And then finally, we're gonna grab our red chilies. Repeat as before, chopping off the tops, splitting down the middle, pushing out as many seeds as possible and adding them to the jar.
Next, we're gonna add our dry ingredients. First thing is our cardamom pods. Grab about four or five of these, but be careful. They are strong, so don't put in too many. Followed by dried chilies. I think these give a nice smoky flavor to the hot sauce at the end of the day. They're completely optional, however. Then our Aleppo pepper, about a teaspoon of this. I would recommend not skipping this. This is a, a big flavor ingredient in the sauce. Then we're gonna grab about 10 to 15 black peppercorns. It's the same stuff that's in your pepper grinder at home. And then six teaspoons of just regular household table sugar. Now repeat again with six tablespoons, tablespoons, tablespoons of kosher salt. Now we're just gonna fill this up with some water. Make sure to leave a little bit of air up top for the fermentation process and for shaking. Once it's filled, put on the cap and give this thing a really good shake until all the salt and sugar is dissolved or at least most of it. Once you're done shaking, you're gonna let this sit for two weeks coming back every day to open it up and let in fresh air to help the fermentation process. Otherwise, your jar may explode. I have one that's been sitting for two weeks right here. So now let's finish up the sauce. You're gonna to wanna to get a colander and place that over a large bowl. Then take the mixture and dump it in, separating the vegetables from the brine. Make sure to save that brine though for later. Once those are separated, grab your largest blender and toss in the vegetables. Then add a cup to a cup and a half of the brine and get ready to blend. Next, you're gonna add the top of your blender. Make sure you secure it down well. Don't make the same mistakes I have by sending all your food into the ceiling. Then give that a mixture on high until everything's blended up. Pop the top open. And why don't we give that a little bit of a test? Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now the only thing left to do is store the product, grab a glass jar, fill it up, and this should stay in the fridge for up to a year if people let it last that long. Normally this goes pretty quickly. And the nice thing about this is that it's a quick cleanup because I have to go get ready for lizards practice. So let's go pack the bag and hit the road. So our bags are packed. We're gonna head off to uh, the Long Island Sports Hub for a little uh, Lizards captain practice. Get the uh, dust off the sticks. Got a big, uh, big game versus Boston this week. It's a must win for us. Fortunately, we're inside because it's pretty gross out. So let's hit the road. <laughs> 